All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace your code by using the debugger. The debugger is a tool that is used to help you to figure out what's wrong with your program. But uh, And there's lots of reasons to use the debugger, but for this example, we're going to use the debugger to trace along the code and follow how uh, the functions, how the code jumps into the different user-defined functions. This is an example of something that we will be working on uh, this semester. So in this code, I have a bunch of functions. These are user-defined functions. I have a greeting function, a get integer function, a calculate sum function, a divide function, and a print result function. All these functions were created by me for this coffee program. So basically, the algorithm for this program is that it greets the user by calling the greet function. It asks and get the number of cups of coffee by calling the get integer function. It's going to call that get integer function three times to get three numbers from the user. Then it's going to call the calculate sum function to calculate the sum of those three inputs. And then it's going to call the divide function to calculate the result. And then it's going to call the print result function to print the result. So let's just uh, run this and watch. So how many cups of coffee do you drink each day? The first is three, the second time seven, and the third time four. So the sum is 14 and the average is 4.67 cups of coffee. This is a very simple program, but I wanna show you now how to use the debugger to watch your code execute. So let's uh, close this window down here. All right, so to get the debugger started, you can go to debug and go to start with debugging, or you can just hit F11, which turns on the debugger. So if you use the F11 function, oh, I'm on a Mac. If you use the F11 function key on a Windows computer, you can start the debugger. Because I am uh, connected on my, on my MacBook to the engineering student desktop, I'm going to just use the uh, I'm going to use the drop the drop down window. So I hit F11. You could hit F11 on your keyboard, and this starts the debugger. Now a lot of windows come up when you start the debugger, but you can see I'm right. This little yellow arrow right here says where my code begins executing. Now in all C programs and C++ programs, once you create an executable out of your code then it needs to know where to start executing from. Now, on some, in some languages, the execution just starts at the first line of code. In the C program, the execution starts at the first line of code inside of the main function. So we're going to remove some of this information because we don't really need all of these windows right now. This is a very powerful tool, Visual Studio, and it allows you to do a lot of, um, a lot of very uh, interesting create very interesting applications, but for us, we just want to keep this locals tab open so that we can watch the local functions, the, the local variables in each function that we're in. So the options with the debugger are F10 and F11. So if you go here, you can see F, F, F11 is going to step into the statement. So if the statement is a function call and it's your function, it's a user-defined function, you want to hit F11. If you are calling like, a, if, you're call, go, if your statement is like a printf statement, then you want to hit F10 because you don't want to jump into printf. Now you're welcome to try to jump into printf, but I'm not going to um, do that in this demonstration. Now you can, there's all kinds of shortcuts. I'm just going to focus on two things, either stepping into something or stepping over it. Now, you can see here that my when I hit that F10, it came up and I hit F10, then a couple of uh, statements have executed. So the variable cups one, cups two, and cups three and have been declared. They've not been initialized any values, so you can see down here that they don't have any usable values for me. So if I go here again and I hit uh, F10, now you can see that all of my variables have been declared and my sum is the only one that has a usable value because it's the only one that I initialized. So the local variables that belong to the main function are cups one, cups two, and cups three, and they don't have any values uh, yet because they haven't been given any values. 
Now I'm going to hit F11 and I'm going to step into my greeting function. So you can see that the code before I was in my main function and when I hit F11 it jumped out of out of the main function and into my greeting function. And my greeting function doesn't have any variables, so all of those variables that belong to my main function are no longer uh, listed because the greeting function does not have any variables. So now I'm going to hit F10 again and hit F10 again. And I can follow along in my output window here and see that that has been printed onto the screen. Welcome to the cups of coffee and hit F10 again. And when I hit, now I've finished all of the statements in my greeting function. My greeting function has a void return type. So what's going to happen now is it's going to just return back from where it was called in the main function. So I hit F10 again. And now you can see I've come back here. The greeting function has completed and I'm back in my main function and my main function has these variables, AVG, cups one, cups two, cups three, and sum. So now I'm going to print onto the screen how many cups of coffee. So I will once again hit F10 because I do not want to jump into printf. But now I'm at my get integer function. This is one of my functions. So therefore I want to hit F11 so I can jump into my get integer function. And what happens when I jump into my get integer function? My code is going to jump out of the main function and into that user defined function. So what the debugger allows you to do is it allows you to watch the execution of your program line by line and follow what's going on. And it's very simple. There's only a couple of things that you have to remember and that is F11 and F10. So when I hit F11, I'm going to jump into my get integer function. When I jump into my get integer function, you will notice that get integer has its own local variable. Its own local variable is called num1. It does not know anything about AVG or cups1 or cups2 or cups3 or any or sum or any of those variables that are in the main function because the main function has its own local variables. And that's a very important concept to understand in this course when you're developing your user-defined functions. So as I'm in here, I'm going to hit F10 again and now I'm going to hit F10 again and I'm just following each execution and when I come here I'm not going to be able to continue because scanf is requiring input from the user so I'm going to enter a 9 this is a lot of, a lot of uh, coffee that this user so now I entered a 9 I hit enter and so now you can see this variable that was num1 has now been assigned the value of 9. And now this 9, if, you, if I continue to watch, is going to go back and it's going to get returned back. I'm going to go back to the main function and it's going to get returned back. And if you watch what happens, it's saying that the get integer function has returned the value of 9. So that entire get integer function right here now has become the value 9, and that value 9 will then be assigned to cups 1. So watch how that happens. And see now cups 1 has now been assigned the value of 9. So now I'm going to very quickly go through and give values to cups 2 and cups 3, all by calling the get integer function, num1. We're back in the get integer function. So now I'm going to continue to follow line by line until I um, to put in a value now for scan f. I'll put a different value. I'll put 4. And then we will go back. I have to do this for 3, three times. So now it's going to go back and assign that value. Now, cup, now get integer last time returned a 9. This time get integer is going to return a 4. So that 4 on the next statement execution is going to be assigned to cups 2. Now we have to do it one more time. And I didn't jump, I'm going to jump into the get integer function one more time and to get the value for cups 3. 
So you can see we're reusing this function three times. And so I want to enter a different number, five. And we'll go back to our main function again. And the five will now be assigned to cups three. So now we've got, we've used the get integer function three times. So now we have values, cups one, cups two, and cups three. So now we're going to call the calculate sum function. The calculate sum function has its own integers, which are going to make copies of cups one, cups two, and cups three. So watch what happens when I hit F11 and I jump into the calculate sum function. You will see that arg1 got declared and initialized the value of cups one, arg2 got declared and initialized the value of cups two, and arg3 got declared and initialized the value of cups three. And if I continue here to go through each execution, each line, uh, now, the sum has been calculated, which is an 18. That's the end of this function, so this function is going to return back to the main function. And it's going, the main function has its own sum, and that sum is now going to be assigned the value that was returned from calculate sum. And now I can do the same thing with the divide function. The divide function is going to take the sum, which is an 18, and this literal value of 3, and it's going to divide them. So if I hit F11 and I jump into the divide function, arg1 got assigned the value of 18, arg2 got assigned the value of 3. What's very interesting here is you can see how precise this uh, calculation can be. Now we're making an average, so we don't care about it being a really precise calculation, but uh, if you were doing you know, things that you need a lot of precision, uh, you can see how this calculation can be done on, on your computer. All right, so next now we're going to make the calculation. So we will continue here by hitting F10. The quotient has been calculated, which is a 6, and that's going to be returned back to the main function. When we come back here, the divide function, you can see the divide function has returned a 6, and that value of 6 that was returned by the divide function is now going to be assigned to the variable average the next time that I hit F10. And now all of my variables in my main function now have values. So the last function I'm going to step into will be the print result function. The print result function took two arguments. So if you look back up here, the print result function, you can always scroll back up in your code. It took the sum, which was an 18, and the average, which was a 6. And the print result function got called. Arg1 got declared and assigned the value of 18. Arg2 got declared and assigned the value of 6. And if I hit F10 here, it's going to print this onto the screen. And I can follow along in my window, and it printed onto the screen. And then if I continue and I hit F, oh, I stepped out. It's OK. And I continue and I hit F10. You will see now that my program is done. And what I did was I watched with this little yellow uh, arrow. All I needed to do was. F10 to step over something, and F11 to step into something. And if I get myself caught somewhere, uh, all I have to do is I can build, and it'll say, do you want to stop de debugging? And you say yes. So if you are using the debugger, and you're hitting F10, and you're hitting F11, and you want to stop doing that, you just hit build, and it'll stop the debugger, and it will be fine. The only rule for the debugger is that you must have an executable. Like you cannot debug code that does not compile. So if your code has not compiled and built, meaning you you then you don't have an executable to follow along, then it, you cannot use the debugger. But if you have working code that has built into an executable, then the debugger is a very good way to follow along what's happening in your code.